guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the Arsenio Buck Show. We're going to talk about two things today. We're going to talk about COVID and spending. I came across one of the most brilliant videos in all of the internet last night, by far. Valuetainment, Patrick Bedavid. He interviewed this economist. She went to Columbia. She's just a brilliant individual. Worked on Wall Street. I want to say brilliant, but her intellect, her intellectuality is unmatched. Okay, just phenomenal beyond phenomenal. So when it comes to her, and she was talking about COVID, and then we're going to talk about spending, because first we got to understand exactly how did COVID happen, and. Hearing it from her, a female perspective, is by far, far better than a male perspective. Because a male perspective, they crowd their judgment with a lot of blame game. So you look at the Russians, you look at the Americans, you look at the Chinese. It's a bunch of blaming. We can never get to the heart of it. WHO, full of males. People don't keep it real. But women, and this is why I love females, they keep shit real. They really do. Like New Zealand, they kept it real. You know, Germany, she kept it real. Taiwan, she kept it real as fuck. But when it comes to the male, the dominant male countries, they just like the bullshit. And we know that male's been bullshitting for the last 3,000 years. More than that. She said, there were already already people talking about COVID in November of last year. China, they knew. They knew. They knew it was happening, but they wanted to sign a trade. Okay? Barring the fact that if... If there was a pandemic that, and and you know, this trade clause, it was signed on December 15th. And so as this was happening, China was like, we're not going to let anyone know. People in Wuhan are already dropping like flies. They just decided to shut everything down. This is why when when all those videos started surfacing, we were like, oh my fucking God, what's going on out there? When hospitals were being built, oh yeah, oh yeah. But it's funny because then they say, oh, well, hospitals aren't at capacity. I can no longer believe the Chinese or anything that comes out of that country. So if we look at it, they needed to sign that trade clause before they announced the first COVID. Because that trade clause, was it, it's specifically stated, barring a God knows pandemic. I forgot what the clause was, but basically it would negate everything. So if they were to sign this and the pandemic would happen, they would look back and say, America, but we already agreed on this. Regardless of a pandemic or not, this trade is still going to go on because Trump now no longer can go back and say, no, fuck that. We ain't going to do it because then they have it in writing. No, dude, we got your signature. This is what it was all about. Now, remember that the, the, uh, the Chinese doctor was already talking about it to begin with uh, at the beginning of December. But because, obviously, you know, you, you, you know the, um, the, 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 the communist state and you know how they try to shush people up. And they know that they had a billion dollar trade clause that was coming up with America And so they said, you shut the fuck up right now. And right when we sign this, we're going to come back and we're going to kill you. You guys honestly thought, you you guys honestly think he died from COVID? Come on, let's be honest. You think he died from COVID? I don't, I honestly can't believe anything right now because people are saying, oh, doctors are dying of COVID. I'm like, I'm sorry. No, no, something's going on. Something's going on. You're telling me you get COVID, boom, you just drop like a fucking fly. I just don't believe it. This isn't SARS. This isn't SARS. There has to be a development over an exp- uh, an ex- exponential amount of time. But this isn't for here to say or nor to say, whatever you call that saying. We're just going to stop that there. Now, next thing you know, two days later after the trade clause, December 17th, boom, they say and announce their first COVID case. By that time, because it was already swirling around in Wuhan, man, it had already reached America by the Decembers. They were already here. Thailand, they were already here in December. The folks from Wuhan had already brought it because, again, they were talking about it in November. So that's exactly what happened. Now, who, WHO, they did not hold China responsible. And this is why I think who should be held accountable. Now, what China did was an act of war. It's equivalent to an act of war, what they did. They held information that could have prevented countless lives from being lost, and they did nothing. Now, if I was a prime minister of a country, if I was Donald Trump, Donald Mr. Dick Trump, 
I would say, you know what? We want no trade. We want all American companies to pull out of China. We're done with you guys. Fuck all of you. We would literally supplant that entire... I know. It's crazy because everyone says, well, made in China, made in China. Find another place. Made in Thailand, made in Malaysia, made in Indonesia. I don't give a fuck. Made in Vietnam, made in Myanmar. Myanmar needs a lot of help. Oh, well, fuck the genocide, motherfuckers. Go to Vietnam. Shit, Americans, they owe the motherfuckers anyways. How about you go to Laos? Their overall GDP is no, lo- no more than $18 billion. Fuck. They're just $6 billion over Seychelles. Goddamn. That's a Western African island country. Follow me here. Now, that's what I would do. I would ban... I, I know this, this is not racist whatsoever. I would ban all Chinese people from entering America. If you have a Chinese passport, you cannot enter for one year. Why? Because your government, look, look at the lives that were lost. When it's all said and done, dude, this is going to be about 150,000 dead. Is it, wait, are we already at, uh, no, shit, I'm tripping. No, because America's at 60,000 already. So, 100, man, this is going to be about a half a million people dead from this. And it could have all been prevented if China did not, if they say, you know what, fuck this trade clause. Hey, America, man, to be honest with you, this, this shit is going around right now. But they didn't want to do that. They cared more about money. And this is the problem with men in the world. Money, 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 money. Even if it kills lives. Even their own. They hush the doctor up. They hush the other ones up. They hush the educators up. You know how the communist state is. I'm not blaming Chinese people. I'm just calling you for... I'm just calling it like I see it. So, but... And then... The complete fumble on America's behalf... Okay, you guys probably didn't know that you guys had all these different types of, um, uh, you, you, you know, different, uh, you know, illnesses, you know, by the beginning of January, Trump just kept saying no, disgusting Fox News was saying, oh my God, they're trying to do this to derail Donald Trump, fuck a Donald Trump, fuck all that, we're talking about humanity here, but CNN was also doing it too, so they fucked up just as bad. So, by the time Iran, southern city of Keene, they ended up reporting it. Boom. And then people were saying, oh, they're underreporting. There isn't 50. There's about thousands that are already infected. And then satellite, you know, images were showing that there were mass graves out there in Iran. You know, it was the most disturbing thing. One of my, uh, you, you know, one of my business partners, they sent me a video of these bodies being dumped into a mass grave. I was like, man, that's fake. That's just a movie. No, that was real. That was real. I couldn't believe it. I thought that was fake. And I was like, dude, that looks like a body. But I was like, nah, that's a movie. They made that shit up. No, that was real. That was in Iran. Iran severely underreported just as Wuhan did. Come on, 80,000. They hurry up and cut it off. You think I'm fucking stupid? You think I'm fucking stupid? People are like, oh, it went up 50% to deaths. Come on, guys. America, 60,000. Wuhan and New York are similar. I think Wuhan... Is closer to 1 million. I, no, I think the entire country is probably closer to 2 million, 3 million. And I think Wuhan is at least about between 700 and 700,000, around 700,000 cases with about at least 30,000 deaths. That's what people were saying to begin with. But again, a communist state, they don't give a fuck about anyone. Damn, man, I, it's crazy because I would always say America doesn't give a fuck. Oh, I guess nobody gives a fuck. By the time South Korea got their first case, number one, America was still fumbling and saying and detouring, you know, and dithering on everything and saying, nah, this isn't happening. Nah, this is fake. When America could have could have been preventing. See, if I was Donald Trump, I'd be like, OK, what's going on out there in China? OK, you're saying that there's this virus. OK, we're aware of what happened before. SARS, MERS. OK. All right. So this is what I'm going to do. We're going to ban all flights for the next uh, three months coming out of China. They're going to have to go to another, either that, or they're going to have to go to an an island. They're going to have to get tested. We're going to have to see how they are, and they're going to go into a mandatory 14-day quarantine if you come here to America. I'm sorry. Oh, that would just, uh, you better do it. Hey, guess what? America has a million cases now. America, as of, as of April 30th, America has a million cases. That's it. And so, again, by the time this comes around, we might be up to about, by the time you guys hear this podcast, which should be like, like right before my birthday, ooh, it'll be about, oh man, probably about one point, shit, 
about about a million and a half, million and a half, because America grosses about forty thousand new cases a day, and it's never going to stop. There is no peak, there is no uh, curve in the whatever you want to call that bullshit, the curve and flattening the curve. No, not in America. Let that bitch just skyrocket. There's no stopping it because America doesn't know how to stop shit like that. But let me give you another d- complete difference. Vietnam, yeah, the country America bombed the fuck out of. Vietnam, they heard the first case. They were like, oh, hell no. Nah. They said, we're quarantining all you motherfuckers. They put 200,000 people into camps for reals. 270 cases. They got about, what, 240, as of today, April 30th, discharged. That's how you do it. That's exactly how you do it. Why? Because they, had, they knew what happened with the whole SARS pandemic. Hong Kong did the same thing. You know? Taiwan, they said, oh, and you know what's so funny? Everyone wants to just completely ignore Taiwan like they're the ignorant cousin. They did a phenomenal job. And China, man, man, they, come on, let's be honest. If America got a million, China got about, about two, three million. But America fumbled it. When they could have done something, they didn't. They allowed these Chinese mainlanders, they started flooding in, and all these other people, by that time, you had super spreaders all over the globe. Planes were just transferring everything. This is why I'm not going to be in air until May of next year, minimum. I'm not going to fly out this bitch whatsoever. Fuck it. But this is why I think administrations, I think airports, I think a lot of people need to be held accountable. Still right now in America, there are no thermal scans like there are at Hong Kong Airport. There are no hand sanitizers everywhere. There's no one wearing mask, And they're still grossing a ridiculous 40,000 cases a day. And they've been doing this. They've been grossing this amount for literally three weeks. They've been sitting at a fucking peak for like three to four weeks already. That's a country that doesn't give a fuck. Donald Trump should be held responsible for everything. He should be held responsible for all the deaths. Because he had the opportunity. He knew. And then he deflected. No, this is something the Democrats are trying to do to get back up. I don't give a fuck a Democrat, Republican. I don't give a fuck about any of that garbage. That shit is all trash to me. Work together. You want to save lives? No. Well, one million. Here you go. 1.5. We're coming up soon. Xi Jinping's like, see, I told you about the trade war. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. This is how they work. This is how men of the planet work. I'm not saying this in a feminist way. No, I'm just saying, man. You you know, you men have fucked up royally. Look what's going on in Sweden. 20,000 cases and this fucking epidemiologist is saying, oh, well, there's 2,500 deaths and it's because this and uh, group immunity. I don't know if not a group immunity, single immunity, eat my ass immunity, that uh, immunity, whatever you want to call it. The fuck out of here. Start shutting shit down. Norway's phenomenal right now. Finland's phenomenal. Iceland's about to just eradicate it in general. So when I put it into perspective, guys, we're going to have to put spend it in another podcast because this is already 15 minutes. We're going to do the follow-up. Yeah, we'll do a follow-up tomorrow. Now, in saying that, Bangkok? Thailand, 3,000 cases? Come on. That doesn't make any goddamn sense, right? If Wuhan has at least 700,000, people are scared as fuck. Those men, there are at least 30, 30 to 60,000 dead out there for reals. Asian immune systems are nothing compared to, of course, like African immune systems. So, of course, this is how they always are. They're, they're very susceptible to this type of shit. So if I sit back and some people will say, oh, but a year, you can give the figures all you want. SARS, MERS, all this shit originates from here in Asia. Okay, MERS, obviously, yes, Middle Eastern, I got it, 2015, I got it. But the majority of everything comes from here, okay? I don't give a fuck about 1918 flu. You motherfuckers don't even know about 1918 flu. Let's be honest, 1918 flu. God damn, that was during World War I. We were still enslaved. They were burning us on fucking crosses. Black people on crosses. Back in 1918. So fuck a flu. Fuck a bird flu, okay? That's when the world was at war. I don't give a fuck about any of that. That was 102 years ago. God damn. So just just expunge that out your fucking mind. Now, coming back to Bangkok, why are they so scared to open? And all these motherfuckers are like, yeah, just open, just open. If there aren't any cases, just open. And I thought about it, and I said, I think Thailand has about 200,000 cases. And one of my business partners, they were like, dude, Thailand has about 200,000 cases. I said, you sure? She said, trust me, I got a friend working. I said, man, the only way to know is for me to go to every hospital. 
I need to go to City Dad. I need to go to Apollo. I need to go to St. Louis. I need to go to every single hospital and see what's going on. Is it pure fucking chaos? Our nurses, our people stacked up, our bodies being transported. Because that's the only way you're really going to know. Now, the thing is, Thai people, they're not like Chinese people. Because Chinese people, once they say program, program, that's it. They operate like a fucking machine. That's all they are. Trust me. I, and you know what? I hate to say that because I got a lot of Chinese people who listen to my ESL podcast and, you know, they come on from time and time again, you know, on this podcast, maybe about, what, 10 to 20 plays a year and stuff. But come on, let's be honest. That's the communist state, right? It's not like Vietnam. Vietnam, they, America, they like to claim it to be, commu- you know, communist, but there's nothing wrong with Vietnam. Those fu- They don't even have guns in Vietnam. Okay? They don't even have fucking guns in Vietnam. Like, no guns. All right? Vietnam is equivalent to Australia. Ain't nobody dying out there except on motorbikes and shit. All right? So, shut the fuck up. Now, coming back to Thailand. Thai people, they're against everything in this country that's higher up. And this is why if they see something and if nurses saw something, they would record it, put it on Facebook, and become big news. There's no going around it. There's no hiding the truth in this country. Thai people will speak the truth. They will. Yes, there's a lot of fake news, but you can't fake a video. If I go in or if someone goes into city that and they see all these sick people everywhere and they're just on floors and shit like the videos you saw out there in China, it's because Wuhan, man, it com- completely collapsed by the time December rolled around. January rolled around, motherfuckers was already stacked up, and stacked up and dying. But again... You got 1.5 billion of those goddamn people. And that government says, you do this, we're going to kill you. They're well, you're well aware of that from, the, of course, the 1980s with Tiananmen Square. So, I just, I would love, I would like to, I, not like, I would, sh- I would believe that Thailand had some kind of, I don't know, that has at least 100,000 cases. You know, I don't know about the other provinces, but here in Bangkok, I would like to believe that. But if no one's reporting these videos and these videos aren't coming out, that means either the Thai people don't want to go to the hospital because it's expensive and they're dying in home. And there are hospitals and ambulances rolling around picking up dead people everywhere, which I I haven't seen anywhere because, again, Thai people would take photos. All right, because Thai people, they love taking photos of dead people and shit. It's crazy. Um, Or... You know, if we look at it from this perspective, maybe, and just maybe, the government's trying to hush everybody. But again, if they're trying to hush everybody, that's impossible. You can't hush Thai people. It's impossible. Because Thai people are against everything. Because, I mean, they've just been dealing with this shit for 50 years, a half a century already. They've had enough. And so that's why these protests and all these things are erupting. So if we look at it from this perspective, again, a lot of things are beginning to happen especially in this country and if they don't want to open is it the government that's trying to get back at the people i don't know but in saying all that covid and summing up this podcast and going back to what that lady had said originally china should be held accountable everyone should ban chinese people from coming to their country for one year if you don't like it, hey, just blame the government. If they say, no, well, we're not going to make anything, pull out all the companies, stack them up in Southeast Asia. That creates a hell of a lot more jobs. It does. You know, with fucking shitty Bill Gates, I hate that motherfucker, but if he brought the, those bullshit-ass factories out here, it create a lot of jobs. They would. They would create a lot of jobs out here. Or just go to Vietnam. Go somewhere. And make China an independent state. African countries. You saw how they were doing black people out there in Guangzhou, Guangdong, all those goddamn places. You know how they were doing black people out there. In Kenya, Nigeria, they should say, hey man, fuck you. Get your train out of here. Stop building all this shit. Get the hell out of this country. I'm sorry, China. You want to be singled out? Now, this has nothing to do with black or anything. This has to do with you not doing the right thing. And then going back to America, I think Donald Trump should be held accountable. I think he should be completely axed to even consider him to be the next uh, 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 to re- to reelect for reelection is a crime because he did this and he could have prevented it. 
I think people at news stations, they should be held accountable. I think the CEOs of CNN and Fox News and all those trash-ass, bullshit-ass news websites, I think they should all be held accountable. Because they had the ability to at least show the fucking public that there is some shit going down. Where I think the attorney general, the surgeon general, that fucking uh, uh, African-American, but he's like an embodied Uncle Tom. I hate to say that. I don't believe in Uncle Tom's, but he definitely is a cornball brother, you know, a cornball brother because he makes it sound like he's not even a colored person. And he said, don't wear a mask. They don't even work. He could have prevented a lot of things. He should be locked up. I think he, in WHO, I think the main CEO, that tear durst guy, whatever you call him, he should be locked up. I think other people should go to jail for a little bit too. I think a lot of people need to be held accountable. That's just the way I see it. Now, again, I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, it'll be good to have Donald Trump for when all the, when, when all this dust clears and that we realize that China did know. Donald Trump will be the only president to completely destroy China in any way he can. I'm not talking about war. I'm talking about what I just said, but probably times 10. And that's the only guy that kind of has balls to do it. That's the only guy. And, you know, he's the only motherfucker to stand up to Bill Gates, too, because Bill Gates is trying to do some shit. This vaccine shit, he's trying to profit as much as he can. Oh, my God, he's a disgusting pig beyond belief. And Donald Trump, he's the only motherfucker that'll stand up to him. I know that all these other Democratic guys, they ain't going to do a goddamn thing because they will bow down to China, pull their pants down, and China going to fuck them good. I hate to be graphic, but that's how they are. You know, we need someone to stand up to these fuckers. Because if they kill this many people, they owe every country in the world at least $1 trillion. U.S. It's your fucking fault. Let's go. That's $200 trillion. Oh, we don't have that much. You better figure it out. You bought all those fucking ivory. You, you got all the ivory and bullshit from out there in Africa. Of course you got a lot of money. Got to be held accountable. So, guys, I'm done. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Oh, let's talk about some spending and saving and how this creates a generation of uh, new thinkers. I'm your host as always, over and out.